Hello, it is Dr. Render. I am glad to come back and in this new tutorial I will show you how to create a snail shell. Shell has interesting shape which we will get with the help of geometry nodes. And be sure to have Blender 3.0 because some nodes are not available in earlier versions. Let's start with creating new geometry nodes to the selected mesh. You can delete group input node and add mesh line node in mesh primitives by pressing Shift A. Now the default cube mesh is replaced by line. Change the mode to end points. For end point set x to 1 meter and z to 0. And the count to 100. It will set the resolution of line or simply number of points. Then add set position node. This node set new position for each point of input geometry. Add transfer attribute node, which sets values from input geometry and output them as some mapped data. This setting will transfer the position of input geometry vertices to output attribute. Add the input position node too. Set everything like shown on the screen. After this, add nodes separate XYZ and combine XYZ that will allow us to manipulate each coordinate separately. In Blender 3.0 the principles of work with geometry nodes have changed. Now we don't need to initialize attributes with variables, but instead it is fully node-based. We got to the math part. I use geometry nodes to create a logarithmic spiral. Add three math nodes and set them exactly like shown on the screen. Note that logarithm base is exponent. At this point we see nothing, but sine and cosine nodes plugged to x and y create some peculiar picture. If you multiply each value by x, which is actually the radius, you will get pretty nice logarithmic spiral. You can set number of turns with the end x position of line. and its resolution with count. But you can use common subdivision surface modifier instead. The last thing that left is Z coordinate, because the spiral is flat now. But at first let's clean up nodes to make walking space look tidy. To set Z coordinate, we will just multiply X by some number. And this is the final result, which we will use further. The modeling part starts with applying geometry nodes in modifier step. Now we can go to edit mode by pressing tab and delete this extra vertices. Then Switch back to object mode. Duplicate spiral mesh with Shift D and scale it with S key, like shown on the screen. 
Duplicate one more time. Scale it once. Then press S, then Shift Z to scale spiral only in XY plane. Continue duplicating and scaling. Follow the steps on the screen to form some sort of amateur. At least 7 spirals are needed. When the work is done, select all the spirals and press Ctrl J to join geometry into one. Switch to edit mode and delete vertices that will not be visible from the outside. Now we can go forward and fill the faces. Select corresponding edges. Press F to create face. Select edge that now connect two spirals and hold the F to fill all the faces between two spirals. Repeat the same, but be careful and stop at places where I stopped. If you've done everything right, you will get mesh that already recognizable as shell. You also get the same gaps on the top and on the bottom that have to be filled manually. Now we need to form inner part of shell. Fill manually that part where the filling was stopped previously. After that, select the inner vertices, change the transform pivot point to 3D cursor, then duplicate this curve, scale and place near the corresponding part of outer wall. Repeat this for each row. When it is done, fill faces to add thickness for outer wall. After this, Select opposite inner faces and press I to create an inset of them. Don't drag mouse too much. Select bottom edges of inset, press double G and slide edges up by amount of wall thickness. Repeat for upper edges, then these inset faces must be deleted.
At this moment I've noticed that I missed one row, but it's not big deal to fix. Pay attention to how the stop connection is done, because it is a bit tricky. After that, the mesh is ready. The only thing you can improve more is that you can slide these edges so this part wouldn't be so sharp. For some reason, created faces of the mesh are oriented to the inside. To fix this, in edit mode press A to select all faces, then go to Mesh – Normals and select Recalculate outside. Now all faces are painted blue, what means that everything is fine now. For texturing, you need to create some nice UV map. In edit mode, select edges that would be the most appropriate to create seam of them. After that, go to Edge, Mark Seam, press A then U and click Unwrap. You will get UV map that is seen in UV editor. The map is fine, except for these overlapping faces, so shrink this part a little. In Blender you can export UV map as image and then it can help to create a texture. In UV editor press A to select all faces, then go UV. Export UV Wearout. But if you select some certain faces, when UV Sync selection is on, you can export only selected faces as image that will help much to paint the shell. To make lines along the spiral, I duplicated my mesh applied modifier and select faces that I wanted. Then I exported that layout in desired format and resolution. I used GIMP to create a texture with help of UV layout, but you can use any other graphics editor.
After shade is set up, you can edit texture more with texture paint. I use it to blue edges. Anyway, I will not stop at texturing because the result I get isn't something I am proud of. My shell looks more like candy or something. One more thing, there is another way to paint certain faces without exporting UVs. In 3D viewport switch to texture paint and switch on paint mask. With this mode on you can select and paint only selected faces. And that's all. This is a shell I got. And you can get the same or even better one. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it was useful. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe please. Comment if you have any questions, advices and so on. Bye!